Dave Godwin. He's Shraddha's friend who is now joining us here on CNN News 18. Godwin, we appreciate you taking out the time and joining us here on CNN News 18. Could you first begin by telling us and our viewers, how did you know Shraddha? For how long had you known her? I have known her for almost, say, about less than a year because the instance started way back in 2020. November when uh, one fine day I had got a call and my brother had got a call that one of our office colleague is uh, looking for immediate help because she used to work for a call center back then and uh, it seems Aftab had physically assaulted her and uh, had tried to strangle her, uh, choke her and she somehow escaped and she immediately wanted help and she had nowhere to go so she had immediately called her office for some help and because it was far off for people to help her immediate basis so they had tried to get in touch with my brother because we stay in the same vicinity and at that same point in time even I was available at home so when this horrific incident happened my brother narrated this to me and immediately we got in touch with Shraddha and called her home she immediately came to my house the first appearance of her me seeing her face to face was very uh, bad because uh, she being a very uh, I think fair girl her complex was very uh, fair so I could literally see bruises on her face okay your blood blood clotting was there uh, just on her face and uh, during the conversation I even got to know that she also has bruises on her lower waist all right and uh, after uh, pacifying her I got to know that uh, she was being physically assaulted and uh, this was not the first time that this had taken place this is the time when she took that courage and her saturation level had gone to that point that she had to escape somehow if she wouldn't have escaped I think the horrific incident that happened uh, in May which we are talking about right now this would have happened way back in 2020 itself so uh, after listening to this I immediately took her to the nearest police station which was uh, Tulin's police station Nalasubara East we registered the NC after uh, registering the NC on 23rd November 2020, way back uh, uh, during the uh, duration, say between 3 o'clock till 6 o'clock, we were in the police station only. Uh, we came back home and she was uh, as in, in fear of going back home. So during that course of time, I happened to pacify her. I started talking to her to get to know her because I was just a stranger to her. I sure. didn't knew her personally. She was just trying to seek help and whatever information I could get from her, was the bits and pieces I could have collected and tried to help her. No, so Godwin, what you're saying is that the physical abuse and assault dates back to 2020. There was a police complaint also that was registered. Was there any action taken and did Shraddha Absolutely then voluntarily right. want to go back and stay with Aftab? See, I, I'll tell you what happened that day. Uh, immediately we went to the police station, we registered the NC because even police would want to verify the actual synopsis of what happened because it was just one-sided of Shraddha uh, narrating a story, right? And because uh, she was the main victim, I was asked to stay aside because I was not part of a relative. So I was told to stay outside when the NC took place. Uh, after getting the NC, we had immediately come home. And uh, that same day, I was just talking to her, got to know what she does, how she does it, how, what is Aftab into. And uh, I also got to know he was a drug addict. He used to sell drugs for his living. He used to make a lot of money with that. And eventually, next day, uh, she had come home again. I had called her. And we wanted to seek uh, woman help because obviously, she being a woman, she will not be able to disclose everything. Sure. See, wounds which are external can be shown. Wounds which are internal cannot be told to a stranger, especially to a person who is a male of your same age, right? So we happened to encounter that and we tried to get women help immediately. We took her to one of the centers and we narrated the entire story. And the women center, in fact, initiated the inquiry immediately and told her, if you want, we will take legal action against Aftab and we will have him behind bars. Because if you think you are weak enough, we will back you up. Sure. If you are saying what happened with you is correct, is, is the truth. So she said, yes, what I, whatever I am saying is truth and uh, we will uh, discuss this in detail in the evening. She had to go out again. Okay. And in the evening when she came back, during that course, afternoon and evening, I do not know what happened in the evening, a statement changed and she 
told us that she wants to take the case back and she doesn't want to take any legal action against Aftab. I think that time she might have got in touch with Aftab and Aftab might have emotionally blackmailed her because the first day when she had come to my house, Aftab was calling her back to back and okay. when we were not taking his call, during that course he was sending her WhatsApp messages and WhatsApp call recording as in the voice recording and he was only saying if you don't come I'll suicide. And this is one of the bullshit thing that he was doing and this female was getting carried away. Even though in the situation when she was like uh, in fear, in that pain, she even made me, as a stranger, she made me order food for Aftab, get it delivered to his house. I personally went to deliver the food and in that rage of anger, Aftab just threw the food and told me, who are you to deliver the food? Whoever is concerned for me, tell her to come home. So in middle of all of this also, he was emotionally blackmailing her and that's why you feel that Shraddha withdrew the complaint. But I want to go back to something that you spoke about a short while ago, Godwin, and that's very crucial. What did Shraddha tell you about the nature and the mannerism of Aftab? You said that he was not just consuming drugs, but also selling it. Is that correct? Absolutely right. There was one statement which I particularly remember and it is verbatim to what she told me. Uh, she clearly said she has one of the uh, videos in her phone that is a escape route if anything goes wrong and Shraddha knew long back that something wrong is going to happen to her and that is why she had most of the evidences of his drug peddling which he used to sell the drugs and I do not know the terminology but she used to tell me he used to make brownies and sell them and late night say at 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning people used to come home to collect drugs. Okay, Godwin, lastly before I let you go, when was the last time you spoke to Shraddha and what did she tell you? Did she once again speak about a physical harassment or torture by Aftab? Uh, post uh, November, we again got in touch multiple times, but then she was happy go lucky, she never complained. But uh, on and off, there were a couple of updates that she used to give me. She uh, moved on to another company where she was pretty much doing well, she got promoted. She was even planning for a personal trip, solo trip, which she used to like to do. She wanted to plan to go to Nepal. So I told her, if you want a company, I might even want to join you. But that was not concrete. She was just uh, as in roughly jotting it down. And over and above to that, she also told me that Aftab was trying to tell her that they both will be shifting to Dubai. And Aftab is the one who planned the Dubai trip. So I asked her, will it be on as in work basis? Are you trying to settle down? And she told me, yes, Aftab wants to settle down over there and he doesn't have a passport. He'll be applying for one soon. And I told her, I had given her a hint that today being in the city, you are in Mumbai, your family is just around the corner. Sure. Today you are not receiving help. Tomorrow you go to another city, another state, another country. Do you think you will be able to approach or escape this situation again? And she said, now things are better and he is mentally doing well because he was earning at that point in time. All right. And after that, I think, say, uh, the last conversation I had in 2021 only, the first quarter, I guess. Okay. Uh, I that also was the last to, interaction of I me also want her. to know before I let you go that did you ever speak to Aftab one-on-one? -on -one? Did you ever meet him? Uh, no, the only conversation I had to had with him once when he was trying to harass her the same day, uh, when he was trying to harass her, I happened to take the call. I told him, just calm down. She'll be back home. Give us some time. So he had told me, who the fuck are you? And he started abusing, okay. which was not the right way to actually address a stranger who's trying to help your living partner to calm down in this situation of pain. He should have ideally reacted in a much better way that she's already safe and taken care of. And the second instance when I had with him is when I went to deliver food to him. When he, in that rage of anger, he threw the food and he desperately wanted her home. And if not, he would have damaged himself. That okay. was the only two point of contact. I happened to see him face to face during the delivery of the food. Okay. Okay. Godwin, we appreciate you taking our time and joining us here on CNN News 18. Thank you so much for giving us those crucial details. These are friends now narrating of what happened with Shraddha gives us an insight of what their relationship of Aftab and Shraddha actually looked like. Let's take a